very suspicious power banks from an Asian shop in Sockey Hall Street in Glasgow. And the first one I got, uh, I noticed they had pink ones, but I thought I'll get one of the purple ones just because, you know, just for a change from pink. I mentioned it in the live stream and was instantly chastised and uh, then I had to go back and get the pink one for completeness. So these uh, power banks, they're the classic little style, but they're marked with this little label, 2,600 milliamp power, and I can tell you that they're absolutely nowhere near that. This one uh, took a, an initial charge from being, uh, they did both come with a charge in them. Uh, from flat, I charged up again, 565 milliamp power, second charge, 584, so it's getting better. And what about the pink one? The pink one I measured a, a charge of 659 milliamp power. Now, it's worth mentioning. That when I I'm just looking at the calculator here. I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to go and grab the calculator. I could try and work it out in my head, but that's actually quite hard to do when you're filming. But I'll I'll do it anyway. Uh, so this one I, initially when I got it, I thought, well, how much capacity is still left from in the cell inside? So I just put it on charge and measured the capacity, which was 485 milliamp hour, which means it's approximately 175. Four milliamp hour was left in this um, before you, out, out the packet, so to speak. <coughs> you get the usual thing. You get a little lanyard that nobody ever uses, and a little micro USB lead. I shall pop that in the bin. I shall put this pack of lies away. Uh, features? Does it say anything exciting on it? I've not actually read this. Do not throw, touch, not disassembled or pierce a five. Don't immerse it in water, that seems, and keep away from children. Excellent. Absorption new charging technology. Spread, extend the usage of battery. Safety design. Protect mobile and life. A life? Light, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Enough of that. Let's open one. Oh, let's test one. Let's uh, bring down a little tester here. Um... And this little tester as well. And see how much current it can deliver. So let's plug this in here. This is a variable load. Uh, this is the little uh, USB meter. I can never remember the name of these. It'll, when it powers up, it'll say. Now, I have to say, I've already discovered that once I power this up, I have to put a load on it straight away. It's the UM24, this one. So let's put a load on to stop this shutting down because it does seem to have quite a clever little chip in it. Debatable whether it's actually clever, but let's zoom up in this so you can see. So let's run this current up and see at what point it drops off. So that's 500 milliamps, 600 milliamps. It's still holding 5 volts rock solid, 700, 800, 800, and right. Okay, it starts dropping off about 850, 800. Starts dropping off quite forcibly. It's down to about 4.4 4 volts at an amp. So, yeah, and then now it's cut out. Okay. Rightio, so let's zoom back out. It can deliver. Oh, and the red LED lights, but it cuts the output out. Oh, I want to try that again now. I want to see if I can trip that. Unplug. Is it going to wake up or is it going to just go off for a certain length of time and then wake up again? No, no, it's just it's gone off completely now. And I've plugged this in, does it wake up? Yes, it does. Okay. It does have a red LED. There is a slight issue with that red LED. It's just, it lights to indicate it's discharging and it flashes to show it's charging and then goes static to show it's charged. That's reasonable enough. But it doesn't line up very well. These are standard case and it doesn't line up quite well with the cutout. Let's open this up. I've not had the pink one open. I have a wee peek in the purple one because I was just so desperate to see what the capacity of the cell was. The cell in the purple one was purple. This one is purple too. Here is the circuit board. Is that going to come out? Yes. The circuit board has a tiny 
little six pin chip in it. You know what? I'm going to take a picture of this. I'm going to take a picture and then we'll analyze the circuitry. It has the lowest component count I've ever seen in a power bank, I think. It's very impressive. It's, mm, right, I'm going to actually uh, take a look at that now. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to eat a little bit of candy. So I'm going to spare you the mastication noises tonight. I'm going to be eating the last of the jelly banana that was sent by Patrick. And uh, Patrick said this is very divisive. Some people like these. It's sort of, it's a clear jelly and it's that generic banana flavour. And it's got a citrus note as well. And he said, some people hate them and some people love them. I like it. It's very, I've eaten the orange version of this before and it's good. Ralph did not like it, but Ralph did like these, which were also sent by Patrick. He sent a selection of these things. And it's notable that Ralph liked them so much that when I came back from Glasgow, the majority of them had been eaten because he'd visited the house to check the candy was okay and helped himself. So these things, uh, I'll, just, I'll just bite one and a half. Are, are sort of multi-layer gooey fondant inside. So before I masticate any further, I shall pause and I shall go and uh, take some pictures of this and then we can reverse engineer it. The sweeties have been eaten, the pictures have been taken. I've also had some crunky that was sent by Remco. And uh, this stuff, it's basically it's solid blocks of chocolate that has been then re-dipped and they've got tiny little flecks of the sort of uh, crisp rice in it. Very nice. I shall put that to the side so I don't suddenly start masticating again. Much as temptation is to stick it in the mouth. Nice. That doesn't sound right at all, does it? Not to worry. So let's look at the most boring side of the circuit board first, which has the USB output connector plus a LED, that's it, and this battery connection, that's all that's on this side. There's no other components hidden underneath, which makes it even more remarkable that if you look at the other side, it has one little six pin chip, two capacitors and an inductor, and that's everything. So I've already checked and uh, I was following the pins out and I thought maybe it'll have a separate pin for the charging vo supply voltage coming in from the micro USB to charge and one going out to the large USB but it doesn't uh, it's they're both common together which means it does that very slight annoying thing that just roughly a wee bit long in a second it will just dip the output very briefly so it can actually check because if it dips the output and the voltage stays at 5 volts it knows it's being plugged into a charger and will start charging but if it sees a voltage drop it will just keep putting the 5 volts out to or maintain the 5 volts in the output it does have the facility that if you put too light a load on it will cut out and switch off which is a bit annoying but it's just uh, Presumably that's just to save the battery in storage, and it certainly worked. These batteries both had capacity when they were actually out the packet. Let's reverse engineer this. So let's bring in the notepad. I've looked up the chip 27U328, or is that a V actually? It's, it looks like a U, maybe I should have tried V as well, but certainly I didn't come up with that chip with searching with a U. I think it might just be one of these very specialist chips that, you know, it's not made to the likes of us. It's strictly for the manufacturers. So let's reverse engineer it. So let's start off with the socket. So uh, we'll call this USB in and out because they're both in parallel. That's why it dips to actually check if it's being charged or if it's putting a load out or if there's a load connected. It's quite clever in a way. There is a capacitor across that, that's this capacitor here, and then it goes to the chip, which will just draw the chip as it is. So it's got uh, six pins, four, five, and six, and there's pin one there, which pin one is the positive, uh, that's the negative. So that is the positive in and out complex. The negative comes across and goes to these two pins. Now, I'm thinking that the reason there's two pins is not just for the current, you, that's these two here, but also because it might be using that to get rid of some of the heat from inside when it's in charging mode because there's quite a large copper plane here. And uh, my guess is that maybe that is uh, how they're dissipating some of the heat because this uh, acts as a linear regulator when it's charging the cell at about 800 milliamps. So I'd expect that to get warm. I didn't test that. I'd actually have to run this low 
and then uh, charge it again, look at it with the thermal imaging camera. I'd guess this chip will get warm though, and that is that attempt to sort of dissipate the heat. Uh, so the let's uh, reference this rail, since it's negative, let's put it to the sort of usual sort of common zero volt ground rail type sort of symbol. Uh, this pin here is easy, that is an LED. Actually, I could have drawn the LED over to the there, but I didn't have uh, drawn this direction, not to worry. But it goes to the negative rail again. Everything's referenced the negative rail here. This pin here is going out. This is supplies the charge current to the battery. So there is the lithium cell. And I'm putting it way over there because there's also a capacitor across that for stability. That's this capacitor here. And it's going out to this positive terminal here. Uh, those are then referenced to the zero volt rail, the ground, the local reference in the circuit. So that's the lithium. And that's capacitor. Um, then there's a little inductor is going between this pin and the positive of the battery. And the value of that inductor is 4 hour 7, so that's about 4. 0.7 micro henrys, I believe. And that's it. There is the provision for a mystery capacitor there, presumably just to decoupling to protect the uh, switching circuit against the transients from the inductor. And that would be, again, reference to the zero volt rail. And that appears to be it. Really not much to it, is there? It's the simplest design I've ever seen. So when it's charging, it detects that that voltage is there. It then uh, current limits it, charges the lithium cell. When it's not charging, it uh, tests the output, and if it sees the voltage across that drop significantly, it will then kick in into uh, out output mode. But it will normally probably keep this topped up to 5 volts. Although, as I say, it goes into sleep mode. I'm not sure how it detects. It probably pulses the output and just sees if a load is uh, is pulling that down. And if you put the 5 volts on the input here, then it detects that when it pulses the output off briefly, it uh, will detect that 5 volts is still present or go into charging mode. It's the lowest component count I've ever seen that in one of these. It's uh, impressive. Very, very odd. Just inductor chip, two capacitors, and that LED is just an optional indicator for charging and uh, discharging or charge status as well. Very interesting, very neat, just for that chip alone. Clever that they've streamlined it down quite so much. Um, what else is there to say about it? Not much. It's just a heavily integrated little power bank, and it does put out a decent amount of current. It puts out uh, about, was it about 850 milliamps before the, the voltage started falling. falling. Uh, and But it's kind of managed up to an amp at the point it was really uh, just dropping down to about 4 volts. Very neat, very interesting. Um, but disappointing in a sense that, oh, there's that thing. The... Um, the LED could have been mounted, if they'd mounted the LED just that little bit closer, that way, it would have gone into this little light guide, but it doesn't. So it ends up actually just on the outside of this light guide, which means you just end up with a sort of red splat of light in this thing. I could probably demonstrate that if I plugged a load into this. Because then it would go into a uh, powered mode. Can you see it? It's just a random splat there. Still works though. That's all that's needed. Um, and that's about it. I was using this in the video. Uh, I didn't know the capacity at the time. I used this in the live stream video to power the Tukan, the Neon Tukan. This thing that Ebdy said looks like a break dancer or bowler. And uh, it did not last very long. Although this is only drawing about 100 milliamps, that low capacity of about 565 uh, milliamp power Plus the fact that uh, it's got the boost com uh, losses, the conversion from the lower voltage up to 5 volts, meant that it just uh, it cut out quite early on. That I didn't turn it on just before the stream. I had it on in the house, just hooked up on a nail, just to, for a 
just for the novelty of it, really. Um, but there we go. Yes, it, it cut out quite quickly. It, it, but, you know, it's it's an interesting circuit. You could put your own cell in there, but do remember that it does have that thing. It will cut off at very low loads. And also it pulses the output, which may actually, certainly in the case of this tester, which I've misplaced, um, it was uh, resetting it at low current loads. Um, actually, it was more like it was probably just shutting off when it detected there was uh, no significant load there, which is just one of the downsides of these things. There it goes, it shut off. Oh, not to worry. That's uh, just the quirk of... Uh, keeping things as minimal as possible. But there we go, it's an interesting little circuit, even if it doesn't quite uh, yield the performance that was promised.